and in the full screen mode. Yes, okay. we can see you. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, thanks, guys, for you know joining us in this webcast today. Uh, especially because it's quite late, and you know it's great that you took time out to come and you know uh, discuss with the four speakers that we have today. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, you know. Uh, introduction give a bit of introduction about what we do and uh, about the event and how we gonna run the event and uh, then we will start the talks with the four speakers so first of all just to you know familiarize you with the way this uh, uh, event works or this event software works you can see the chat window on the right most of you are already chatting with each other there so you can uh, introduce yourself there uh, maybe you know greet other people around and just mingle around with them uh, if you have any questions don't ask them in the chat there's a q a uh, widget uh, that you should see add your questions there they can be upvoted by the community and the questions that will have more of quotes we will pick them up in that order and then we'll pose those questions to the speakers at the end of the webcast uh, answer the poll there are a few questions already there uh, our team will also add more as uh, the time progresses, right? And uh, be social. So blockchain career is the hashtag for today. If you think uh, there is something that you learn, something that you want to share with your friends, uh, please go ahead and share with the hashtag blockchain career uh, and also tag Cutshot HQ uh, on Twitter, on Facebook and Cutshot alone on LinkedIn. And we have a few goodies. So uh, you should see on the, in the chat window, you should see some link to invite your friends. First, you still have some time. Uh, the person, three people who invite the most people to this event will also get uh, a Starbucks card as well as uh, a nice exclusive cut short t-shirt, right? Uh, before we begin this webcast, uh, I think this is something which I have, I'm not sure uh, if whether this is a, the largest gathering of blockchain professionals or enthusiasts in India, but we have 800 plus attendees here, which is a, uh, which is something which, you know, we did not anticipate all of you to, you know, make this event a success and uh, let's uh, begin the event and let's start the information sharing. Uh, in terms of agenda that we have, uh, so the three goals, that we are trying to address in this uh, this webcast today. One is the overall understanding of blockchain area. Of what exactly is blockchain? What are the applications? Uh, how did we arrive here? So understanding uh, that part, which is the core of blockchain, not getting too much hyped up or too much distracted by all the crypto uh, or the hype around crypto. So this is more about blockchain, understanding the key uh, fundamental aspects of blockchain. Uh, then some discussion around career prospects in blockchain what uh, what is the market going to look like in next let's say couple of years and uh, how to learn and build your blockchain skills if you are interested and if you think that there's what the market needs you have something how can you learn that skill and build your career so we have four speakers uh, and we have tried to you know give you four perspectives so two of them are developers who started out as a web developers who uh, you know, did Ruby on Rails and other web apps, and then they gradually moved to blockchain and they build the name into it and they learn skills. So those are two speakers, uh, Nilesh and Niranjan, who are going to talk on that perspective. Then we have one speaker, Gangadhar, who is a blockchain architect into this blockchain space. And he will talk from the recruiting perspective that when people or startups are hiring today for blockchain, what are they looking at? Uh, what do you need to know? And what do you need to uh, make sure that you have if you want to get hired at these companies? And then we have one uh, special uh, speaker who is Satish. Uh, he is a blockchain uh, architect himself, and he also has he also has recruiting experience, uh, vast recruiting experience, and he also is a faculty member at Amity Online, who are our friends and who are going to uh, launch a blockchain program for professionals who want to transition to this area. So he will also present his side of the story that what is the demand supply, what does the market need, what does the market need and what do people have to learn 
and how you know they are trying to solve that problem with uh, amity online can you add me ranjan right so that is the agenda and about before we go uh, most of you know about cut shot but those of you who don't just two lines for you that you know we are the fastest recruiting platform with 5000 plus companies all the way from smaller bootstrap bootstrap startups to funded startups to google and amazon and uh, you you know we believe that modern professionals should directly connect, connect with each other uh, they don't really deserve job boards in today's day and age so that's what we're trying to solve go ahead and check it out on kashor.io uh, without taking much of your time uh, let's begin the talk so we're going to have first uh, speaker who is uh, nilesh uh, i'll let him introduce himself because he has worked quite extensively on a lot of things so nilesh why don't you take over and uh, you know begin with the introduction yeah all right thanks nikanj yeah so uh, i'm basically been into software development industry for 14 years now uh, done a lot of back end enterprise web application mobile development all sort of things uh, machine learning uh, electronics hardware yeah uh, but i've always been a generalist and uh, uh, and blockchain is a perfect space for people like me uh, let me just make sure that my uh, screen is shared okay yeah all right so uh, the way i got started into blockchain is uh, uh, very interesting i basically uh, i was doing data science and uh, other kind of things and i discovered blockchain for the first time and i found it very interesting because it seems to connect many many disciplines that i am personally been interested in uh, economics mathematics uh, cryptography and so yeah, that's how that's how i got started and basically i So yeah, I've been curious about uh, philosophy, society, economics, game theory, and uh, I started discussing more and more about blockchain. Doing more about more about blockchain, it felt as if we we were back in 1995 when internet was coming along and re-architecting everything. And that feeling still continues. Uh, this the pace of change in this space is really high. So I uh, started op uh, making open source contribution to this project called Bitchain DB. It's a German company. Uh, they had set up a permission public uh, network called Interplanetary Database (IPDB), and I just started building things uh, like libraries and SDKs for them, and that's how I got started. And uh, somewhere around last year, they shut down IPDB, uh, so I was looking for alternatives to build my own apps. So I looked at Ethereum. Uh, I, I actually was familiar with Ethereum, like I, I, I could. I knew what solidity smart contracts are. I had written a few, but then I uh, realized that okay, there are some trade-offs that are available in uh, that are that have been made in the such public chains, which are not always optimum for the kind of problems that you are trying to solve. And there, that's when we, along with a few others, we decided to set up a new blockchain network. We are calling it Indium Network, and the focus here is basically whatever makes sense for the app developer, right? What is what whatever they need. So, for example. Shorter block time, uh, faster confirmation, lower transaction fees, and things like that. So that's my story. Uh, now coming to Web 3.0, and I'm purposely and deliberately using a this term Web 3.0 rather than blockchain because it's a broader umbrella. It covers multiple aspects beyond blockchain. So, uh, for example, the whole this movement is about decentralization. Uh, we want that till now we have had a uh, centralized entity like facebook and google who we use them as apps and as users and they control all the data they derive all the value out of it instead of that what we what started happening is we are we are moving to more decentralized uh, systems where we get more control the users get more control the developers get more control so and this movement is affecting every part of the stack right so in, in terms of browsers there's a br uh, browser that uh, mozilla founder has created called brave it has an inbuilt token where it tracks the attention that users pay to websites and then it rewards the publisher uh, similarly in storage we have uh, projects like ipfs which basically takes the idea like 
uh, what torrents used to be but it makes it available to anybody for any purpose right so anybody who has a free hard disk space they can rent it out and they can store uh, other people's files and start earning money for uh, operating systems for computation like golem uh, so web 3.0 is a broader term that captures what is actually happening uh, if we just use blockchain we miss out a lot of uh, other things so yeah so what tools are we talking about here so uh, blockchain uh, there is there is not a single definition uh, but yeah it, what we mean is a distributed ledger and there are different it comes in different flavors uh, there are permission less blockchain like bitcoin and ethereum but there are permission blockchains as well like hyperledger and bitchain db and and yeah so another dimension to look uh, at for blockchains is what kind of smart contracts does it support and again it's a continuous spectrum bitcoin uh, had smart contracts built in from day one they took it out in in a favor of safety and now they are bringing them back ethereum was designed to have full fledged turing complete smart contracts from day one and there are some projects which have taken a a, a middle path so deterministic smart contracts which are formally verifiable so again you you really have to look at and pick the tool which is the right tool for the job uh, when it comes to storage i have already talked about ipfs um ipfs is a interplanetary file system any node can uh, share and download and sync files and you really don't you really don't have to care where the file comes from because you are referring to a file by its hash which means that if i give you the hash you will always get the correct file even if you get it from your neighbor from your isp from somebody else from wikipedia from google it doesn't matter and again it's a very very fundamental change in the politics and the architecture of the systems uh, bitchin db is also a, a very interesting project so what they've done is uh, they've taken mongodb and added some blockchain properties to it by running a gum service in front so you really get a database like performance you can query data you can search for things at the same time you can get some sort of uh, control in the sense that you prevent double spending of assets uh, another area that very few people uh, seem to uh, know about uh, and i hope they learn more is protocols so interledger is a protocol which allows transfer of value from one chain to another chain and and that chain doesn't have to be a blockchain right it could be a bank it could be a, a another payment system it could be a ledger which is a centralized ledger so interledger is a cryptographic protocol it it doesn't have any token involved but it allows you to transfer value from one chain to another and it's a i believe uh, it can be a really game changer so yeah what kind of people uh, this space needs and this space is moving too fast right so yeah, primarily we need multidisciplinaries uh, simply knowing programming alone or simply knowing uh, ui or ux alone will not take you far right you may have to build uh, in in uh, moving pieces which fit together right so for example one of the key aspects in any blockchain project is game theory and uh, for those who don't know game theory is a very simple branch of mathematics which says if these are the rules then what are what is going to be the outcome and mechanism design is the uh, flip side of it uh, mechanism design says if if these are the outcomes that we want how should we design the rules and the reason why this becomes so important in this space is because we are so uh, uh, insistent on immutability so once you design an app all the rules are hard coded and they can they are immutable they can never be changed again which means if you if you didn't design the rule carefully your app will not succeed and therefore game theory and mechanism design uh, has become really really crucial in this uh, in this space if you look at projects like filecoin uh, which allows you to sell buy and sell hard disk space in a decentralized manner they had to figure out a lot of game theory aspects right what if you ask me to keep a backup of your of your file i keep one copy but i i claim to you that i have made 10 copies of it how uh, how am i going to prove that right so again ui ux uh, till now blockchain has been a bit difficult uh, for users to get on to uh, but that's why it makes a lot of difference to have a really good design team a uh, lot of economics ideas are there right when you design a token and you should your token have a finite supply should it should it have inflation if there is an inflation is it increasing over time decreasing over time uh, what kind of supply curve should you follow what kind of monetary policy will you follow all these ideas all these questions have been discussed in eco economics for decades but now they have become very very practical needs for this space for programmers you can't just you can't do a good job by just being a programmer 
and one of the key aspects in blockchain is community building uh, you should not ideally you should not think of a blockchain project as a startup a startup till now has been very centralized very isolated kind of environment a blockchain is basically a community right it's a it's a belief network it, it, it has a value because people believe in it which means that community building is really essential and we have lots of uh, jobs lots of work coming up for people who are uh, willing to engage with users developers all sort of stakeholders potential investors right so community building is again a very very uh, important aspect of any blockchain project any web 3.0 project yeah uh, coming to how it's being adopted uh, so blockchain the first application was obviously a cryptocurrency uh, bitcoin is a digital money and ethereum came and said wait uh, we can actually uh, build a state machine around it and nobody has to trust any other node and that has actually uh, long, uh, brought this boom because now people can build applications that will once you develop and you publish then you are never in in charge of it so users you don't have to trust you anymore now in terms of businesses uh, we are seeing lots of use cases in terms of supply chains ibm for example is using blockchain to track uh, shipping containers when they travel from china to let's say us it's uh, half around the world you you can really track okay who took the ownership of that container which which port which ship right entire history is maintained on the ledger and it's it becomes very easy to verify uh, in pharmaceuticals we are seeing that okay people really want to know where did the ingredients come from and which means that um, history of the movement of goods is important now in bitcoin or in ethereum a transaction basically means uh, you have some inputs of assets and some outputs of assets in supply chain that just mean, means uh, inputs of goods and outputs of goods so you just really take the same idea but change the underlying meaning and then it becomes applicable to the pattern uh, one very important application area is digital rights uh, for example if you want to track who is allowed to watch my video who is allowed to listen to my music and you can track that on blockchain and it really makes it transparent because you don't have to trust the label company or the 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 video uh, publisher company to assure you that um, okay we have, they have respected our rights or not and this is, you can also call it digital asset management right so for example i uh, i gave you uh, a right to do something for a short time period and the blockchain will record that fact that okay that right was valid only till this time period and after that you didn't have the right anymore we are also seeing lots of use cases in governments Uh, primarily blockchain is a record keeping tool right and uh, government so far haven't been very enthused about using it in a decentralized setup but the record keeping aspect the immutability aspect is still uh, useful to them so we are seeing lots of applications like uh, putting uh, your degree certificates uh, on the blockchain so that they can be verified and then used for you know uh, ap applying to jobs and applying for loans and things like that so land records Uh, a land is also an asset which gets transferred and divided and then recombined exactly like like how money uh, uh, goes through all these stages so we are using seeing lots of cases where land records are being maintained over blockchain uh, dispute resolution because we want to uh, have trust in the facts and once a fact is verified by something and that verification and that attestation is on blockchain it has so much more value so we are seeing lots of adoptions like this and we have most many many more user cases which are use cases which are consumer friendly and we can talk about that in the uh, later sessions yeah so coming to the uh, career building aspect yeah so this is quite uh, interesting now there are many many opportunities for you guys to uh, take up so for example if you are building if you are building the core part of a blockchain the node that synchronizes and then verifies the transaction and then approves them and then adds to a ledger those are mostly being written in c++ c or golang so ethereum for example one client is written in golang the other client is written in rust and we really want type safety and static uh, typing so that's where the developers are in demand a lot right the application developer people who write smart contracts uh, solidity is by far the biggest um, out there because because of ethereum and that's the current choice that they have made but ethereum technically is compatible with with other languages as well so there is a language proposed called viper and there used to be a language called serpent and this space will evolve so solidity is a very good starting point for anybody who wants to learn uh, distributed apps decentralized apps 
now there are some obviously uh, the other projects have different needs for example uh, hyperledger which is a ibm project and which is used to create permissioned networks they have this idea called chain code uh, so that you can you can use your knowledge of other languages to implement smart contracts and they sandbox it in certain ways uh, there is a, a company called uh, chain.com which has again its own language called ib and there are a whole bunch of options there but if you just want one single answer i would say go with solidity for now uh, apart from the code that lives on the blockchain you still need other functionality which could be in the browser or elsewhere and javascript is sort of the standard these days because it runs everywhere you can write on servers you can write on devices browsers televisions watch watches everything so and it all also interacts very nicely with let's say ethereum right because they implement a rpc api uh, you can basically web3.js and you can go back uh, but a career on career building aspect the one uh, one thing that many people miss out on is uh, networking like connecting to people you just by becoming a really good app developer you will not have a successful career you need to reach out to people and here are some tips that i have uh, selected for you which is ask for help don't get stuck uh, don't get stuck at all try to find as much as you can about the problem try it everything that you have done but then go out and ask in forums there are channels on gitter uh, there are discourse forums there every blockchain project has a very active community you can ask questions there uh, you should also try to build a personal brand uh, reach out Uh, try to achieve things. Try to answer. Try to help other people. Assist them. That helps you in uh, your personal brand. Uh, you can contribute to open open source project. Most of the blockchain projects actually are open source project because you do want transparency. And uh, we there is so much work to be done that there is you have ample opportunities to contribute. Uh, but primarily, I yeah, don't work in isolation. Work in groups. Learn from each other. Learn from people on the internet. And you know, just don't get stuck. Uh, as if you know you can take three years to learn something. This space is moving really fast, and you should be you know uh, picking up it quite fast. Yeah. Uh, in terms of some concrete steps that you can take today uh, to get started, uh, I would say you can take up bounties for blockchain projects. Right. Every blockchain project, Ethereum, EOS, Indium, Stellar, they will have tasks that anybody can take up, and they will range from very simple to very difficult. Pick up whatever you can. Start you. you get both the things right you build your skills and you become part of that community where all the jobs and all the projects come from uh, second thing is you should also catch up with the advancements because as i said this this space is moving really fast so whenever you hear of a new interesting project let's say filecoin or ocean protocol you go out and actually read and understand that white paper white paper because they talk about the protocols they talk about the aspects that are that are involved in bringing certain guarantees so that users can trust it so one of those one of these ideas is a token curated registry so for example all of us want to know which college is a good college to join and we have a stake we have a incentive to build such a list but colleges have an incentive to appear on that list that's that means that we need curation and can we do this curation in a decentralized manner that's that's what a tcr is a solution for and there are approaches to it for example i just just give you a brief uh, idea of it let's say that both the curate or the candidate and the challengers have to stake some money right so iit wants to say that i am one of the top 50 colleges in the world okay they have to deposit some money for that uh, or it could be in tokens and once they deposit they are up for challenge and then anybody like you and me can raise a challenge again by staking some money for our own that okay you don't deserve to be in top 50 of this list and now the community decides by voting whether the challenger is correct or the candidate is correct and whoever wins either the candidate will win or the challenger will win right either the iit will uh, win or I, either i will win so the the money that both of us had deposited a part of it is given to us or to the winner as a reward that's a simple idea of a token curator registry and it's being used everywhere right anywhere you want to ensure quality in a decentralized manner you will uh, have to use token curator registries a uh, very interesting piece is prediction markets uh, we can create markets for everything even if that thing is in the real world and not cyberspace right so uh, what is the price of bitcoin going to be one year from now that's you can have a market around it people can bet on it and that uh, that because that fact lives on black blockchain we reward people who bring better quality information 
uh, I would also advise you to build domain expertise. So blockchain in itself is very, uh, I mean, it's a very, it's a, it's purely in cyberspace, right? You can solve very few problems with just blockchain. You really have to understand a domain as well. Are you trying to solve copyrights with blockchain? Are you trying to solve supply chains? Disputes, right? You have to, have, you have to understand that domain. What are the incentives of stakeholders? What are the protections they want? What kind of proofs can be built? So you really have to build a domain expertise if you want to have a successful uh, uh, career in this uh, fast moving space. Uh, I would also add that beware of hype, hype because there was a bit of a bubble uh, some at least for some time and it is being oversold for some cases. So you should really understand what is a blockchain, what can it do. For example, I would summarize it as it can prevent double spending of a digital asset in a decentralized setup. So if government, if some company says that, okay, we will put uh, degree certificates on blockchain. Now you really have to think, okay, do, why do degree certificates need to be on blockchain? Why can't they just be digitally signed? Uh, is, is double spending a really a problem there? And in most of the cases it is not. So be, beware of hype. Uh, it's being oversold. Uh, you use the right tool for the right job, right? Sometimes blockchain is the right tool. Sometimes it's not. You should know your stuff so that you can spot bullshit and call it out. So a lot of things are being sold uh, and uh, people are not looking carefully. They are investing money. They are losing money. I would say go deep, try to understand things uh, and focus on solving meaningful problems, right? I mean, you take it. You might think about, okay, dating on blockchain might be a good idea. I don't know. Uh, is it a meaningful problem in the first place, right? Are we, we are not even able to solve dating in a centralized setup. Then how can we solve it in a decentralized setup, right? So, Really think about the problem that you are capable because your end users will not care about what technology you have used. They will only care about what solution you have got, what uh, properties does it have, what guarantees does it have. So, yeah, that's all from me. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me. Uh, we our Indian community Slack is open. Uh, we discuss all sort of issues. We build all sort of things. Please join. Please ping me anytime. Uh, you're all welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so yeah, I think that was very interesting that the way you, I think what stood out, uh, you know, for me is like what you said in the end, which was about, you know, users don't care about what you use to build a solution. They care about the solution itself. Uh, something that people should remember. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try, uh, Nilesh, I'm just going to uh, get you out of the screen so that I can invite the next speaker who is Niranjan. Okay. So let me just uh, remove you and, and get you back. Okay, now we should have Niranjan in like a uh, few seconds. Yeah, hi Niranjan. Yeah, you are visible finally. and you are audible. Awesome, finally. <laughs> yeah, finally. So you can start your screen share. Sure. Um, try this. We can innovate all we want. I think the one thing that scares me is audio, video, and conferences. <laughs> yeah, I think the there's a right there's a business idea right there. Yeah. <laughs> Something on some audio video on blockchain. All right. Uh, uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes, you can put it on the full screen. Yep, it's full screen now. Oh, shoot. I think I just clicked stop sharing. My bad. Uh... All right. So uh, just confirming again, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Awesome. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Niranjan Singh. Uh, I'm a developer by profession. I am also running a, a development agency based in California. We have uh, we do a lot of uh, web and app development. But uh, in the past uh, past, I would say year or so, we've uh, we've been doing more and more blockchain stuff. And there's a lot of projects. There's a lot of demand on that side. So I'll be talking about uh, what it would mean being a blockchain developer, how you can get started, what got me started, stuff like that. 
Um, so just to start off with, uh, I'll I'll talk about why I started look, looking into this. Um, I've been reading about Bitcoin blockchain on and off since 2013, right? Um, but I never really understood what it was, how it meant. I didn't look into the details. I never bothered with it. But uh, last year, finally, when uh, Bitcoin crossed five thousand um, dollars, all everyone started talking about it. All the media outlets uh, were hyping it. I thought being a geek, um, I definitely should at least be aware of why, why, what it is and how it works and um, why do they call, call it unhackable, stuff like that. Um, so I, yeah, so I, I, I came in with a slightly skeptical mindset. I thought it's, it's all just hype. I don't think it's, there's uh, too much there. Uh, but when I started reading into it, um, I, I started going through the fundamentals of how it works. I, I understood how each block is built on top of the other and why it's, if you change it through math, you cannot undo it. Um, all of that, all of those concepts, I think that that really blew my mind away. I, I was really fascinated by it. I could not put down what I was reading. Um, in fact, to, te to tell you the truth, um, I remember when I got in last year, uh, those one or two months when I just started reading about everything. Uh, so I, I have clients, I have like major deadlines coming up, right? Um, and my work started getting affected because I could not focus on the other regular stuff once I started knowing what all is happening in this world. So it was just very fascinating to me. Um, so I, I was just kind of in love with everything that was happening. Um, and, and the one thing that kind of really struck me was the concept of smart contracts. Uh, being a developer, that, that concept was kind of, uh, it came naturally to me uh, once I got it. Um, the concept of smart contract is especially this one simple fact that if you think about it this way, every business in this world is in the end is a bunch of contracts, right? It's, it's just a bunch of simple contracts. Um, if you just taking anything, for example, let's say Uber. So, uh, you, you want to, you, you book a, a ride through Uber. That's basically getting into a contract with Uber, uh, requesting to uh, Uber arranges a taxi for you. You get into the cab, you, uh, you are, you, the taxi gets you to a point and then you pay some amount and Uber splits it with the ta taxi driver. So that's a, that's a contract. That's an agreement between you, Uber and the taxi driver, everyone, uh, being involved in that understanding. Uh, similarly, anything else you take a uh, courier service, for example, uh, you have, you come into an agreement with the courier company that you want to ship this parcel from this city, from Bombay to Delhi, and you are paying this much amount. So that's, that's a contract between you and the company. Uh, now, obviously this is oversimplifying it. There's, there's a lot of complexities to it. There's the human part of it. Uh, there's a lot of things around it, but the core concept that everything is a concept uh, is a contract and, uh, and you can, you can make it once you can digitize this, this uh, contract, you know, that you can make a lot of things more efficient. There's always uh, inefficiencies when there's human manual stuff involved, right? And uh, if you can digitize it, make it uh, native, uh, so that smart contract can natively understand money. You don't have to sort of deal with external things. You can just directly send money to the contract and the contract can, through code, it can, it can look at logic and, and decide what to do with that money. Okay, so now if, if I get the approval um, that the, you, the person has reached the, the destination, so this is through the code, right? The contract decides that the money will go to the taxi driver and this, there'll be a cut that will be remaining for the owner. So that's just an example. So there's a lot of different fields, different business ideas and stuff, which can be, uh, which can, the smart contracts can help uh, improve the efficiencies of that business. Um, now, wh why should you care as a developer um, in this space? The, 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 the one clear um, thing that I, I would say uh, to everyone is that this, this space is uh, right now it's uh, the, it, the, the prices or uh, since January of all the cryptocurrencies, Ethereum, Bitcoin, that's not reflecting on the real groundwork that's happening uh, right now. If you go to conferences, if you go to events, if you just try to reach out, uh, get more projects, there's a lot of projects in the pipeline. There's a lot of um, things being built in the next six months, 12 months. There's a lot of things that are planned out and, uh, all of that and being, being being from this industry i can tell you my agency has been uh, getting calls from uh, businesses wanting to do icos tokens uh, blockchain platforms some of them are, might not be as interesting as the others but just the point is that there's a lot of work that's that's being done right now um and because all of that is happening and uh, the number of people who are in this field who know how to build contracts smart contracts and stuff there are very few of them so the demand and supply, it's, it's clearly, uh, it's in the favor of you as a developer.
Uh, and secondly, because Ethereum smart contracts, that, that entire, co entire concept is very new. Uh, Ethereum just came out a couple of years ago. So the, you won't find people with five or 10 years of experience, right? Everyone is, it's, it's, it's a level playing field. You won't find people who have a lot of uh, years of experience in this field. So basically you can start out today just with small steps, uh, making uh, a weekend project, uh, just putting it out there of a fun, um, just uh, I'll give you examples like uh, there's card games, there's different, different types of uh, games and just minor projects that you can do. And slowly, slowly, within a few months, uh, you keep keep at it. Start getting uh, once you once you can execute smart contracts, you can start getting projects. Uh, and pretty soon, you you can become an expert in an area where there's very few experts right now. So that's uh, that's very valuable for the community as well. Um, now, where is the demand exactly? So, like I said, there's um, I've I've been getting a lot of calls from ICOs, uh, tokens, platforms. So that stuff is still very hot, and it's it's getting hotter. There's there's more and more uh, tokens and things that are coming out uh, every every month, every week. Uh, so and and tokens and everything. Uh, how how do these launch? These basically require uh, smart contracts, blockchain uh, specific knowledge to to get those things built. Uh, and for simple projects, it's not that difficult. It's um, you you don't have to. Uh, I, I, I'll show you after um, towards the end of this project how you can sort of get started with creating a token and stuff like that. Um, also, if you look at um, any vertical, any major industry, um, there is experimentation and and proof of concepts being done in in just pretty much everything. And it's not just startups and uh, private companies; it's also government agencies uh, just experimenting with with different things of different countries. Uh, there's healthcare, insurance, uh, supply chain is one of the biggest ones, which I think, I believe, uh, would be disrupted massively uh, pretty quickly. Um, and finances, uh, definitely, you've, you've seen what all is happening in that. There's a lot more that I've not listed. Pretty much, no. Again, you can't you can't apply blockchain to just anything and and expect it to work. Blockchain is perfect for some types of improvements, and some places it might not be. So, but but every industry would definitely be benefit with this technology. So it's 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 key for you to uh, understand what it is and how it works and like kind of get started in technically. So um, in terms of just the types of development, again, I'm simplifying this a little bit. There's more things, but uh, in my opinion, there's there's mainly two types of demands that's there. There's the protocol layer developers, and then the there's application layer development. Uh, so for protocol layer, that's basically working directly on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, the, the get the clients and and just the consensus algorithm and stuff like that uh, also all ethereum or eos or other chains right there's it's all working on the system itself uh, to give you an example this is similar to um there are engineers that can be working on improving an android operating system right there are engineers who are dire directly adding new features and and uh, just improving android every year uh, and then there are uh, a lot of engineers who are building apps on top of the ethereum um, platform so both of these types of developers are, are highly in demand right now, just because there's 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 a lot of projects being done and there's very few developers with that skill set right now. Um, now, I'm assuming some of you or many of you would be web and app developers. I myself was an app developer, uh, web developer before I moved into blockchain. And what I realized is, um, it's it's very if you're you're a web or an app developer already, it'll feel very native to you. It won't feel strange or like a, a very very different concept. Um, that you still have the concept of front end and the back end, right? Um, and and the front end is still pretty much the same HTML, CSS, JavaScript, stuff like that. Pretty much a simple website. The back end, you can you can remove the server completely and replace it with a smart contract, um, smart contract or a bunch of smart contracts together. Um, these are basically deployed in the Ethereum blockchain. You don't have to manage a server, stuff like that. So you just uh, you you just worry about this smart contract, uh, which is which looks like which has a uh, object oriented which has functions and stuff you can call and from the front end through javascript this just calls the functions and replies uh, with the answer and the website just works so to the end user it's it pretty much looks like a website they won't tell most of the difference except for the part where they have to interact with the contract so i can i can browse as an end user i can browse any of the apps distributed apps um but if you, if I want to interact with the contract, if I want to upvote something or or maybe buy something through the smart contract, then I'll have to. That is slightly different. You have to use 
uh, wallets and send eth- ethers and stuff. There's some steps involved in that. But yeah, it's I would say end user would very like uh, a majority of the part would would feel very similar to to the end user. Now on uh, this screen, I would say maybe you 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 take a screenshot. I'll probably also share this after. Um, now there's there's again there's a lot of ways to to get started with it. There's there's tons of things out there, um, and I would recommend just trying out what works for you. I'm just sharing something that that worked for me um, when I started out. I had um, so, so I came across this uh, tutorial called Crypto Zombies, uh, which is written by a brilliant set of people at, uh, I think it's Loop Network, the company. Uh, they created a very interesting, fascinating um, tutorial, which is uh, basically they, they, they start from scratch, uh, assuming that you just uh, you have some experience with JavaScript or just programming in general. And they, they help you build through Solidity, help you build um, a game sort of a thing, similar to CryptoKitties. If you've not heard of CryptoKitties, it's a very popular game, uh, like simple game that, that that took off in Ethereum blockchain last year. Um, so yeah, that 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 walks you through that entire step, and it's it's fun to do as well. Like by the end of it, you're you're having fun while you're doing it. Um, Truffle framework that that is something also that I would recommend checking it out. Um, using Truffle, you can. It, hel- it helps you do all the heavy lifting. Like you don't have to worry about compiling this and that. You just like one command and it's, and it sets up your entire dev environment. Uh, there's also examples and they have some great tutorials. There's, there's this concept of blocks, boxes for Truffle, which is basically pre-built packages or, or just they, they have like entire stores and modules already built, which you can use in your own code or see how it's built and just learn from it. Uh, there's like, it's, it's already pre-working thing. Uh, Open Zeppelin is another project that I would uh, sh- sh- uh, give a shout out to. They have uh, so it's it's a, an open source library which is basically a set of smart contracts already uh, uh, built out and and it's 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 battle tested. It's not something that's like a sample code. It's something that you can literally just pick up and deploy in the uh, in, in production in Ethereum. Um, the reason is because so a lot of common things are like you have to do this over and over again if you're creating a token. Uh, a, a new coin in the market, right? That's a very, uh, it's its not a complicated thing and it's been done over and over again. You don't have to repeat the same steps. You can you can take a, a contract, a code, which has already been, a lot of uh, uh, public projects out there, a lot of famous projects out there uh, have, have taken Open Zeppelin, just changed a few parameters and, and published it to the Ethereum chain. You can have your own token that way. So I'll recommend doing that. that it's, it's a fun, let, let me just show you an example of that. Uh, I won't go into too much details. This is not a very technical talk, just an introduction of what it looks like. So this is a simple contract I, I took directly from Open Zeppelin. I don't have to change anything over here. I can p- push this push this uh, to the Ethereum blockchain, and I have a token, which is called Simple Token. I can change this and use it my, uh, in my name, Niranjan Token, or something else. So I would recommend this is a fun way to start with. You can just name a token in your name or your friend's name, and put it on the ethereum blockchain maybe maybe add it to a decent decentralized exchange like idex or something and it's it's just fun to brag brag about right a, a token in the network um and this is this is literally the code that you require now again as you as you learn more and more about solidity you'll start um knowing the details of it you'll explore all all the different types of it but basically yeah the, the this code if you're familiar with javascript it does not look too different right uh, this is the constructor a few variables that's it um, so that's that's basically Open Zeppelin. I would recommend you checking that out as well. Um, Solidity, the actual language of Ethereum. Uh, checking out the documentation of that. That's also well written. So um, that will help you clarify a lot of things. So these are just the few things that that help you get started. And like doing these, um, I, I I would say you you you're ready to at least um, deploy some s- side projects. So like just trying to figure it out. And the community of Ethereum is. Brilliant! You can you can uh, if you're stuck somewhere you can ask ask people online and you'll you'll be you'll be getting help. So yeah, getting started with this and then and then probably reading. There's a new book coming out by Andreas Antonopoulos, which is uh, mastering Ethereum. But uh, that's not out yet, so I did not link it. It's it's still on GitHub. It's it's just experimenting. Uh, they they they're building it up right now. Uh, but okay, so. Why do I, when I'm talking about decentralized apps and dApps in general, uh, why am I talking about Ethereum and not some other chain, uh, Neo or EOS and stuff like that? I'm talking about the public chains here. Um, why not anything else? It's because Ethereum is, uh, 
they they were early in the space um they have the developer market share right now uh, there's no other framework that's even close so because of that because of so many developers working on this network that's uh, all the tutorials all the tools frameworks everything that's being written to help out beginners everything is for ethereum so anyone who's starting out if you google stuff most of the articles that you'll come across would be for ethereum so i would recommend if you if you're just starting out this would uh, that's one of the main reasons i i would recommend picking up ethereum and like the standard path to becoming a, a, a solidity developer uh, that's just the reason ethereum has a lot of um, market share so um yeah and lastly i just wanted to mention because it's not all rosy i also wanted to mention some of the da downsides that you might need to be aware of um just why uh, the, the the because this the space is moving to very fast a lot of tutorials and, and things that come out books are uh, that's become slightly outdated uh pretty quickly so that's one thing you need to be aware of um the user experience mm -hmm. of apps is not uh very uh, like you you might so to to interact with uh, smart contracts you have to sort of uh make your uh, pay, pay through ethers and call the function so that's that's a bit tricky solidity has its own quirkiness uh it's it's very um uh, it's close to javascript but also it has a lot of restrictions because of how ethereum virtual machine is built uh stuff like that and and also because crypto is it's it's this early in this game um very few people actually have crypto in their wallets to interact with uh, smart contracts so that's a downside like you restrict your market but again on the flip side of it it's it's so new uh, because there's that few people and you know where this this is heading the direction it's 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 growing tremendously so uh it's it's good to be early in this game um i i started developing for the android uh, ecosystem when it was when the app store just came out um i think 2009 10 something like that um Oh, at that point so that gave me a lot of benefits right G getting in early rather than coming in after everyone is already here that that has a lot of uh, benefit in itself uh so yeah i think that's about oh so again this is slightly opinion uh, opinionated uh, approach to to getting started uh there's also other things like hyperledger which is a permission uh, blockchain built by uh, ibm this this stuff that for b2b things but i think i think those are a slightly different uh, type of uh, market than what i've tried to address and especially to start out with to get the fundamentals right i think getting exposure to this would be a better idea for a beginner so that's about it from me um, let me know if you have any questions you can reach out through email nj@vpway.com and we are also hiring developers uh, both if you're interested in uh, in in blockchain work that's awesome that there's a lot of work coming in for that and also regular web web and app stuff as well so yeah that's it. yeah so and uh, so thanks to ranjan we'll get you on cut shot as well so you can add your roles and start connecting sure. with people for your team right away absolutely right uh, and uh, i think you had to uh, you know cramp your talk in this format a bit so what we will also try to do is sure. get your detailed thoughts in some sort of long form content and try to put it up on our medium publication so that more people can check it out definitely i i would be i would be interested in writing up a um, in fact i've already done that for a few friends uh, when i was starting out I, i had like a list of things that i recommended other people to read through or like okay some articles that really helped me understand what blockchain is i've I, i'm seeing on this um, on the chat that a lot of people are asking what exactly is a blockchain there's still i know so there's a lot of confusion about it even i i i was in the same state yeah there's there's a lot of great articles and write ups um, yeah we can compile something but there's definitely a lot of uh, good explanation of simple explanation yep. of what these things are yep so what we'll do is uh, guys or uh, folks you have any questions for ranjan you can add them in the ask a question section if you have any very specific questions for him then you can go ahead and ask him in the chat and he can answer those questions uh we are running short on time it's already like 10 23 pm so we have two more speakers to go so let me just uh, uh get gangadhar are you there and you can get started and i will also invite satish in the meantime so he can take the seat uh, in the background nikun should i should i hang up no what i'll do is uh, you can stand by i'll just uh, remove you from the screen and i'll invite satish uh, and gangadhar is next and satish will be after that okay awesome thank you guys
Yeah, Gangadhar. So you uh, you want me to get started? Yeah, sure. Sure. So I just quickly prepared a deck. So let me okay. go through that. Um, I guess you have a deck in front of you. Um, do you see my screen now? Yes. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So I just uh, so. Uh, Quick introduction, my name is Gangadhar. Um, I work with a startup called uh, ZenProvex. Um, my background is uh, I'm an engineer, plus uh, I went to B school. I worked in uh, uh, companies. You know, I was in Infosys, Cognizant for some time. I was in the US at the time. Then, uh, then after that, I started off on my own, um, mainly in uh, uh, you know, in the care in the space of health, so I made some health applications. Then I moved on to mobile. Uh, so I have a startup which is working on, uh, which used to have a product for uh, uh, mobile and cloud solutions for the U.S. market. So that was one of the things I did. Then I moved back to India. When I moved back, uh, uh, my classmate came over and said, "Hey, you should uh, uh, work with us on blockchain." And so uh, you know, then that's how I got started with. Uh, uh, Zenprovex. Uh, so I think we, we are very short of time. I'll try to go through quick. Um, so this is just mainly what I want to cover actually. So the first thing is what is Zenprovex? We, we are, you know, we call ourselves ZPX. So who are we and what do we do? So I'll just quickly cover that. So we are a blockchain and a cryptocurrency startup. Uh, we have uh, multiple products. One of, one of which is a uh, what we call as a 108 token. It's actually going on right now. The token launch is going on right now. Uh, the, the, the token is, so we are at the intersection of finance, cryptocurrency and uh, uh, blockchain. So this token is essentially a index of uh, leading cryptocurrencies. So think of it as uh, a blockchain based index mutual fund for uh, cryptocurrency. So if uh, somebody is interested in cryptocurrency but don't know where to start, um, this token is mainly for them. So that's uh, that's what we are doing. And then uh, we are also... Can you put sorry? your uh, presentation in full screen mode? Sure. Uh, let me see. Yep, there we go. I think I should have. Okay, there we go. Is it better now? Yeah, yeah. This is not now readable. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, uh, so we, so the first product that we have launched is a one zero eight token. It's it's called one zero eight token. It's on the Ethereum blockchain, and it's a it's an index uh, token for people who are interested in uh, investing in or buying cryptocurrency. So, uh, instead of uh, look thinking about which one to buy which one to invest in, you can actually just buy this token and essentially it functions like uh, index. So we invest in uh, the leading cryptocurrencies. Then we have other products that we also have. One is uh, we have a blockchain based secondary market that we are building out. So essentially what we do here, we'll extend it out into the secondary market for uh, private stock. Uh, so this is one product that we are working on. We also have uh, cryptocurrency research and advisory services and a uh, hedge fund. So that's quickly what we are um, I'll quickly I'll, and I'll go into the things I wanted to talk about um, I want to talk about disclaimers because uh, uh, I think the previous speakers did a good job of uh, uh, covering this so I don't have to say much but what you know right now is you know there are multiple blockchains I think you must have heard uh, you already heard Bitcoin you heard ethereum then there is neo then there is EOS then you know and so on and so forth there are different blockchains the technology itself is in a flux so uh, if you want to get into it, it's very, very confusing. So I, I can see the reason why people are asking, uh, where do I start? I don't know where to start. Uh, that's a very interesting question because if you just go online, there is just too much uh, material out there. Um, but the leading blockchain right now <clears throat> in terms of uh, applications being built on it, it is uh, Ethereum. And that's the point I'm trying to make in the next one. Um, that you know most people go and learn solidity but the point i'm trying to make here is just 
learning solidity does not mean that you will get a job. It's, you know, most people learn solidity so that they can write smart contracts. And, um, you know, your market at that point is mainly, you know, companies which are doing ICOs. And uh, again, I, I'm, I'm trying to be sort of, uh, I'm trying to give you the other side of the view because ICOs are great. Everybody hears about ICOs, uh, but ICOs are also um, in some ways like, a, you know, get rich quick schemes because people know that people are investing in ICOs or buying you know, tokens to make quick money. So it's like everybody is like, okay, let's, let's also make quick money from the greed that people have. So it's a very difficult space, just learning solidity. So um, main, and, and so the next point I wanted to make is, you know, uh, I think this also came up in the previous conversations. Uh, when we are talking about blockchains and the application where there is real application of blockchain technology, it's in cryptocurrencies. So today, real world application of blockchain is mainly in cryptocurrencies. You know, all the rest are either proof of concepts made for, uh, you know, one or the other uh, use case, but not really used um, in real life. So the most used is cryptocurrency. So as a result, you'll hear a lot about ICOs, you'll hear a lot about token sales, you'll hear a lot about that. Um, but the other thing I would also like to say is, I think Nilesh covered this really well. He laid out the matrix of this thing. You don't necessarily have to say, okay, I'll go and today figure out what is the difference between NEO and Ethereum. You know, you don't really need that. What you do, what you can do is, if you have knowledge of web technologies, just, you know, that's enough. Um, the thing is, you, you should know it well. Uh, as long as you know your web technologies well, you can, you can get started and that's, at least my opinion is, I think that's where you should start because, um, you know, going into protocol level discussions, going into uh, a new blockchain type technology, it's, it needs um, a lot of knowledge and a lot of uh, understanding of uh, not just computer science, but also math. But, and I think Nilesh covered it really well. I like this uh, presentation a lot. So like he said, you need math, you need game theory, you need community building, you, you really need to be a polymath and you need to build your team to do that. So uh, if you are just wanting to get in, I would say my, my big recommendation is do, do learn your web technology as well, the front end, back end. Um, if you know JavaScript, if you know Python, that can get you started. Um, but then, you know, as you go along, you absolutely need to be uh, fully understanding of security of application architecture. As long as you can, you can do this. It's, I mean, you know, security itself is a huge field. So I'm not trying to make light of this, but the thing is you should know that as long as you have good knowledge of security and application architecture, uh, you'll get better at this. And, you know, from there you can move into whichever direction you want to move into, uh, whether you want to move towards, chain core protocol type of work, or you want to stay at the application level and build applications on top of blockchains. I think there is a lot of scope for all of them. Um, but I think this was also covered in one of the presentations before user experience is really broken. So think about it, you know, if the user experience is broken, uh, while you're building the application, it is a frustrating experience as well. So you will, you will, you will see that a lot. Uh, so that's where don't, don't try to do it by yourself, have a group, have a community that really helps. Um, the last point I would like to make is there's a lot of publicity. There's a lot of text out there. There's a lot of text. Um, I would say, check it out yourself. When I say check it out, I mean, write code, run the code, uh, play with it, but don't just believe in what you read because believe me, you know, there are people, there's a lot of stuff that's written, but the moment you start, writing and running that code, you will really see what uh, the reality is. And because, you know, the thing is, there are a lot of people who write stuff and people are just reading and then, you know, rewriting the same stuff. The people who actually run the code and understand what it's doing, it's very, very minimal. And you will be that small number of people. So do that. I think you will immediately get a leg up on people who are working in the space uh, and, and also people who want to get into this space. Um, yeah, so, you know, I just want, I just put this together um, to say, you know, you, you can start with web technologies as long as you have deep understanding and get involved with a D app or a product company like, you know, 
uh, with selfish uh, interest, I would say, look at companies like ours. Um, so we also work on blockchain code. We also do Solidity development. Um, but then, you know, Solidity doesn't live by itself. It needs to interact with users. It, it needs to interact with uh, people. So the experience that you gain by doing this can lead to many different directions. And every direction you look in blockchain today, <clears throat> there, are, there are only opportunities. You know, uh, whether it's a wallet product, whether it's a smart contract product, whether it's a backend product, whether it's a security product, whether it's a user experience product, there, there is just there are only opportunities. So it's just a question of in which direction you want to start. Whether you want to start from the web technology side, the blockchain code side, or the protocol side, just do it. Get involved, and you know that's the last point I was trying to make. You know, hands-on beats reading a ton. So if you do that, you are you know you're already ahead of uh, the game. So we are also hiring. Uh, my email address is here. Our URL is here, um, and I'm happy to take questions. Okay, so we'll have questions in the end. Thanks, Gangadhar. Uh, we had Gangadhar in this talk for a very specific reason that, you know, uh, when we spoke first about this uh, webcast, his first reaction was that, you know, most of the people who are getting rid of blockchain space, they are coming for the hype. And uh, that will not take you far. We make a good career in this field. You don't know, you don't only need solidity or something, you also need to be a polymath, you need to have basic understanding and fundamental understanding of computer security uh, and other concepts before you can really call yourself or really uh, when you before you can you know think you are ready for a great career in blockchain. So while all the hype, while there's a lot of opportunity, uh, we at Cutshot wanted to give you that view that you need to be really focused. You need to spend and you know time and do the hard work necessary. To get into this space this is not going to be just you know a time where you can just swing by and uh, get a great job and get out and that is why we also have satish who's also going to talk about who's the next speaker uh, he is uh, a blockchain uh, uh, professional himself and he also is a faculty member at amity online so amity online is uh, uh, a friends and they are launching a blockchain certificate program so we have satish from Amity Online, who will be talking and giving a perspective about where the industry is and where the talent pool is and why they launch this course, what uh, and how and what is the philosophy behind this course and what what are they focusing on? So Satish, you are on. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, wonderful to see uh, kind of interest uh, that blockchain has uh, gained. So we obviously didn't expect uh, so many people to join. So good uh, to see so many people come in uh, let me share my screen can you guys uh, see my screen not yet so i think it is uh, just a minute Yeah, I think you need to focus, you need to put your mouse or focus on that uh, presentation, that application that you're sharing. It's a Microsoft PowerPoint, right? Yeah, now we can see it and you can put in the, yeah. Yeah, you can see it now? Yep. Yeah. So uh, uh, it was wonderful to hear the other speakers uh, speak about the different uh, uh, in terms of how to get started so what i'd like to focus on is you know is is blockchain really the next talent opportunity and if yes you know where are we in, in terms of the opportunity and what needs to be done a quick background about uh, myself so i my name is satish and i run a company called intellectic solutions we are into blockchain development and i also am a faculty and a program uh, uh, mentor at the amity gp course that we're going to launch on blockchain uh, so my background is I come, interestingly, I come with a background in HR and have been in the HR tech space for the last 18 years. And blockchain happened a couple of years back when we were actually looking for a solution for one of the problems that we were trying to solve. So we did not get into blockchain or I did not get into blockchain with interest in the space, but 
cutting because I thought it was a technology that would help a problem that I was trying to solve. That's a quick background. Uh, today we, we develop uh, you know, a lot of, we have our own product that we're developing, which is a background verification system on the blockchain. And uh, we also help other companies uh, with blockchain developing services. We also run a few short-term courses as well. That's a quick background. Uh, what I'd like to uh, talk about uh, from, from the from, from interest perspective is uh, there was a lot of hype. I mean, all of us spoke about the hype uh, about blockchain. So is there is there value to the hype or is it just hype? I mean, should people really look at uh, blockchain as a career? What I'm going to do is uh, show you some uh, uh, information or, or statistics about where we are. Uh, uh, around uh, December of 2017, I think uh, Bitcoin made it around 20,000 USD and uh, buzzing. So you know, Google Trends actually said that Bitcoin and Ethereum actually were the top two or, or in the top 10 uh, search, most searched words. So there is a lot of interest uh, that it's generated. The average investment in blockchain projects uh, is around $1 million today. So the people are, have started investing money in projects. Uh, Juniper Research actually reports that 57% uh, of large corporations have either already started working on blockchain or are actually considering it actively. So the global market, global market, uh, blockchain market is expected to be $20 billion by 2023. And uh, so that's about some statistics about is it really hype or is there, are people really putting money behind it? Are there projects that are happening? So where, where are we in terms of uh, blockchain adoption? Uh, this is typically the adoption curve. And if you look at uh, you know, 2015 is when early exploration in terms of investment and what it can do, if you're talking about it, the early adopters you know, started in 2016, 17, you had some banks experiment with some POCs, regulatory authorities started getting worried about whether it's going to, what's the impact it's gonna have. But it's really now that we're seeing action. So we, we need to really focus in the next uh, four or five years this is what actually is going to happen. So people have already developed uh, POCs. We're probably going to see the first production level you know, system on. So 2018, I believe, is going to be a very interesting year for blockchain. And going forward, a lot of new initiatives, uh, protocol level developments, a lot of challenges. I think all the three speakers spoke very clearly about not getting carried away by the hype because there are a few challenges. It is still a nascent technology. But uh, the thing is that a lot of people are working on uh, you know, these challenges and hopefully very soon we will have answers to a lot of these uh, problems, right? Uh, so what's the talent demand on blockchain? TechCrunch actually uh, put this out saying that there are about 14 job openings for every blockchain developer, which means it's completely opposite of the other uh, market. So here there is a huge demand for talent, but uh, talent is not available. So what it means is that there are a lot of opportunities for people who want to build a career around blockchain. Uh, number of blockchain related job openings has tripled in the last one year again I'm, I'm trying to look at statistics uh, you know and uh, this is a recent uh, 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 publication where uh, the freelance talent marketplace up so that blockchain rose uh, to be the fastest growing skill out of over 5,000 skills which is a year-on-year -year increase of about 35,000 percent so it's a huge uh, shift you know from being something that people thought was just hype to you know, a lot of now interest in, in actually people wanting to learn about blockchain so since uh, Jan of 2017, the demand for blockchain engineering talent and on top talent has grown by about 700%. And so the fact is there is a lot of demand, there is a lot of need, and uh, so there is a real uh, push needed to, be, to ensure that we meet the demand from India as a country where talent is available. So recent report by Computer World indicated that uh, there's about an $18,000 premium for software developers. So again, it's a well-paying job. So if you're, if you're logically sound, you know, you're, interested in, in learning and you know like one of the other speakers said you know you can actually start uh, there's no need for you to really be very experienced uh, in any of these uh, technologies because you know you just have to start learning the, the most experienced blockchain developer is probably four or five years that's also you really need to start learning and there is a huge opportunity in front of you so what do companies look for in a good uh, blockchain developer uh, this is a list I've compiled based on my own experience. And uh, so typically expertise in, I'm talking at the base uh, developer level. So uh, all the other speakers spoke about protocol level and things like that. So I believe that you probably need to start, make a beginning. So uh, I also saw in the uh, poll that 90% of the people who are actually part of the webinar today have either not done anything on blockchain or just looking to begin their career. 
So to begin your career, you probably have to take some of the tips that they gave in getting started, learning some basics, reading, reading up. But uh, from, a, from an expectation perspective, uh, the companies look for, they look for expertise in Solid P, Colang, basics with JavaScript will help you get started. Uh, one needs to be comfortable with multiple languages, that large data sets. Knowledge of distributed systems is an advantage, so read up on these. If you already have experience, that's great. Knowledge of cryptography, you know, like I think all of us have uh, mentioned this. Uh, I also want to look at some of the behavioral aspects which are important because I think uh, this, is a, this is a new uh, upcoming career opportunity. So you will not have the same kind of support that you get in the others. So curiosity is very important. You need to uh, want to ask a lot of questions as to how something works and why, why, why are there issues there or can it be solved. So curiosity is very, very important. Continuous learning orientation because, you know, like uh, the others were also saying, there are developments happening almost on a daily basis. And you need to want to be, you know, on top of it and keep learning and wanting to keep uh, you know, looking for answers for a lot of questions. One of the challenges, again, with this is that uh, when you start working on something, something other, some other development happens and you start thinking, should I work on this or should I move to the other one? That sounds better. So keep it simple. One of the suggestions that we'll give is to keep it simple. Look at uh, protocols that are already in the market that are, you know, that have already that their work is already happening. So be very clear on those kind of uh, decisions. Attention to detail is very, very important. You know, you need to because like uh, people had mentioned, smart contracts are very important. You know, I was reading a report about uh, how, uh, you know, I think a poor research company has said that 50% of the smart contracts are vulnerable. So there is a need, uh, you know, for, for people to be very careful about how they write these smart contracts. So attention to detail is very important. Comfort with ambiguity. I think this is very, very important. You don't get all the answers that you're looking for. You will, you know, you'll probably have to struggle. You'll have to keep asking. You'll have to search for the answers yourself, but you have to be very comfortable with uh, ambiguity. That's, I think a very important uh, trait. So what exactly are the gaps? So we're talking about uh, big demand. We're talking about a lot of job opportunities and uh, where are the gaps? So why are we, you know, finding it difficult? Uh, most blockchain developers today are freelancers. So it's not a very uh, 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 structured kind of a career, which is one of the things that, uh, you, know, you know, it's just like Amity is trying to solve. But as of today, most blockchain developers are freelancers. The learning curve is pretty high with blockchain. Uh, it's a complex uh, technology. Uh, most of the work that we try and do uh, is to try and simplify it. So the workshops that I run personally are actually called blockchain demystified. So we're trying to demystify some of these concepts. So, but the, the fact is that the learning curve is a little higher, so you need to uh, be continuously at it, which is why in the previous slide also I said the you know, learning orientation is very, very important. New developments are happening at the protocol level almost every day, so which makes it a little difficult to stay abreast of changes. So you really have to be uh, personally very interested in reading and, you know, community is a very good place to keep uh, talking or, or, or hearing about a lot of new things, discussing. So uh, I think that point was very, very important that you need to be part of the community. Don't worry about how much you know when you start. You just ask questions, absorb information, right? So that's how all of us learn. Uh, companies working on blockchain have mostly been startups. So that's also one of the, so slowly we are finding that uh, some of the big IT majors and all started forming full fledged blockchain divisions. That is something that started happening. So you will find that uh, demand for blockchain talent is going to go up even from the large uh, IT majors. So from a learning, uh, you know, course or a learning perspective most learning content is pre-recorded self-learning and this is a, this is a new technology so you will have this and uh, you'll probably if you're interested and you're somebody who's uh, you know orientation is to learn new things you will find the right learning content uh, i think uh, niranjan had shared some of the slides with information on where you could start your learning so that's those are things that you should quickly pick up and start what i would also suggest is uh, you know have a, a daily learning culture get into a daily learning culture you really need to work on this and even if you're busy with you know your work and if you really are interested in this space spend some time on a daily basis to learn there are very few structured uh, short courses that cover all key elements most of them are very short uh, short term courses most courses are too theoretical i think hype is also about the complex mathematical concepts and cryptography and yes these are all very very important it also has to be you know, has to be clear about who needs to get to the get in depth for, in, in terms of understanding. So if you're going to work at the protocol level, what are the things you need to understand? If you're going to get the application development stage, what, what do you need to understand? There's a need to demystify the concept and make it easy for everyone to understand. 
opportunities for live projects are very limited. So what you need, what you currently get is you know you put something up and you know put it in the community, people see it and but the, the actual opportunity is in terms of identifying a problem statement and working on something and seeing if it if it's actually valuable uh, in a larger market. Right. So that's something that uh, is very important and that there there are a few gaps. There's no credible university backed curriculum and uh, this has been there for quite some time. So I've been really you know, looking at various uh, you know, options there. One of the reasons why I, you know, when Amity reached out, I said this is something that I should do. So quickly talk about what Amity is offering. Uh, Amity is offering a postgraduate program, it's PGP in blockchain technology and management. Uh, what is interesting is, you know, in this, there are different streams for architects and developers. And, uh, you know, you get hands on experience on live projects and case studies. We've tried to uh, really make it very interesting, engaging and practically useful for people who are uh, going through the course. You'll have interesting assignments that you'll go through on a daily basis. Uh, non obligatory contact classes on the weekend. Also, you know, if, you, if you're interested in meeting people, connecting with the faculty, that's an option. Certification and alumni status from Amity, uh, Amity being one of the largest uh, universities in the country. Uh, career assistance after completion of the program. We're finding a lot of uh, companies showing interest in, in this course and the people who pass out. So that's something that uh, you, you'll also get. And these are some of the tools that uh, you'll, you'll learn during the course. It's a eight, nine month long uh, PGP program. And uh, this is something that you should probably look at. Uh, I'm a uh, the final slide that I want to show you is uh, the, the course is actually run by um, Mr. Srinivas Mankali, who's the program director. He's an alumnus of IIT Madras, and I am Bangalore, you know, 25 plus years of experience across uh, industry segments. He's the program director. You have senior people like Rajesh, uh, who's uh, the uh, ASCOM blockchain special interest group chairman, part of 20 years of experience in telecom. And uh, I'm the, the program mentor, and I also teach in the program. So. You have quite a few interesting people as part of the faculty and uh, it's structured pretty well. That's what I wanted to share. Uh, if you reach out to me for any queries on blockchain, how do you get started? I'll be happy to answer questions. Okay, Satish, thanks. So. Uh, there are 51 questions, so I sincerely doubt if we will be able to cover all of them. So I think we're gonna, you need to now stop adding more questions, folks. You need to start upvoting the questions that you want to get answered. While the talks were going on, I also see a lot of questions have been already answered by Nilesh uh, and other speakers. So I think thanks, Nilesh, for reducing the work already. Uh, I would actually let uh, let me call Nilesh on screen so that uh, since he has been answering most of the questions, if he wants to elaborate on something, some common threads, that it will be easy for for him to do that. So let me just uh, invite him back to the screen. And uh, while Nilesh is uh, summarizing his answers to most of the questions. I'll just look for questions, any questions specifically for the other speakers. So then uh, I can also start pitching those questions to them. Yeah, Nilesh, thanks uh, for answering all those questions, man. No problem. I think there are a lot of overlapping threads, overlapping questions. So if you have, if you want to elaborate on any specific questions, go ahead and do it. Yeah, so I see a lot of uh, uh, beginners. Uh, and I would say that uh, before you start developing on blockchains, you should actually actually try to become a user of it. And I can actually show you yeah. how easy it is, right? So I hope you can see my screen. Are you seeing my screen? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, so uh, for example, you can go to metamask.io. Now, it's a browser extension that works with Chrome and Firefox. It's actually a light wallet. And in blockchain, what a wallet is, it basically keeps your private key. Right? Uh, is, it, is the screen showing up now? Yeah. 
not yet can you retry i think satish uh, we were able to see satish screen uh, screen before this so try again and it might work yeah and by the way we have 999 registrations so i think we're going to have the countdown timer right here wonderful yeah so uh, the absolute beginners go to metamask.io uh, install the extension and now ethereum has yeah, your, multiple networks your screen is your screen is now visible okay. english yeah so you can install this extension it will show up on your browser toolbar like this and what it does is it allows you to create accounts now remember in blockchain an account is just a key pair it's a public key and private key combination you don't have to go and ask anybody to create an account right there's no server now what happens is uh, you need to get some ethers before you can start sending it so ethereum has multiple networks one is a main net where the things have real value one ether is i, I don't know 600 dollars or something um, but there are test nets as well and i can show you when you when you open metamask you will see all this networks there uh, are you able to see the network list now right so for example you can connect to top 10 test network and it will allow you to create an account now you need to get some ethers so you can just google for uh top 10 faucet faucet is an app which gives you free test ethers right and here you would enter your public key get some them uh, test ethers and create accounts for yourself for your friends and then start doing transactions what it will do for you is uh, it will actually expose you to the details like gas fee gas price what is a block time what is a confirmation right you will become familiar with the terminology and that's absolutely bare minimum if you want to uh, become a developer right so before you become a developer try to understand and as a, just as a user try to explore it as much as you can and then you will be in a much better position so you have one send me one test ether right you can just enter your public key which is your account address which you are allowed to share you can share with anybody and this faucet will give you one free test ether then you can divide it and then do transactions uh and then and then you can go to the next step where okay you can think about sending ethers not to a person or not to an account but to a contract and that's when you will start uh, re realizing the uh, the whole concept of a, a smart contract and a turing account yeah. yeah yeah that's that's interesting. interesting so to take any more questions i think there was a question about the confusion for somebody to choose between blockchain or ml ai big data that's the other uh, you know rising set of technologies so what should developers choose should they choose blockchain or should they rather choose to invest in data science ml ai uh gangadhar and uh, miranjan if you want to share insights on it just chat just write something in the chat window i'll invite you to screen in the meantime uh, niresh and uh, satish if you have any thing to share on this topic then please go ahead uh, i think it's purely uh, interest right so there is there is scope uh, for all these technologies uh, blockchain is slightly riskier at this point in time because you know people there are still a lot of development happening but uh, ai ml you know there are so many products that are being developed actually being used already so it's a existing technology that you can actually work on so i would think that it's really based on interest if you like the concept of a uh, decentralized uh, uh, you know network and what blockchain can do and uh, if you have a specific problem to solve that's how i started so for me blockchain happened because i was interested in solving a problem which blockchain was the best solution for so that's the reason i got into blockchain and after getting in i found this really interesting and i wanted to continue working in the space Yeah, I think this question uh, we keep hearing at uh, you know from our users at Cutshot as well, and within even data science and data careers, 
you know, or they all look pretty similar, but then within themselves, they are so different. They need so much different, uh, you know, skill set. Uh, somebody who is good with data science may not be great with data analytics or, or maybe not be great with big data engineering. So I think it is not about this versus that, as, as Satish said, it's more about where do you think, where do you find, what do you find more interesting? Where do you think your true leanings are? Where you are strong at? And then try to pick up on those trends. If you think blockchain, crypto, uh, cryptography, I mean, I mean, and uh, if you want to you know, get involved in more evolving use cases at the cutting edge, uh, blockchain looks pretty interesting, but then it also comes with its own set of uh, challenges. If you thrive in those challenges, great. Uh, else you can choose, you know, you would rather be a great uh, web developer rather uh, than an, a mediocre blockchain developer, right? So always choose various trends lie. So I think what is blockchain? Why do we use this? We already covered this. So I'm just looking at the questions from uh, top to bottom, looking at the most upvoted questions first. Uh, what do you want the speakers to cover more in this webcast? Uh, I think most of the people asked questions there. Uh, if you guys have any specific thing that you want to share with the people there, uh, go ahead and you know and talk. Uh, where to start? How to start? Some useful sites to learn. I think Nilesh answered those. Most of the speakers talked about it. Uh, he also Nilesh also gave you some practical ways to start learning. Uh, I think Niranjan also talked about a game that you can start playing to learn the basic concepts. So I think we already talked about that. What's the ideal platform where a developer can get hands-on training online? Now that might be uh, a question for Satish. Uh, there are quite a few. I mean, uh, I would think that you probably have to first start uh, you know, getting into there's a, there's a website called Block Geeks. So you have a lot of uh, basic startup uh, level uh, information courses, community. So it's, it's one, one place where you can actually get started. There are a lot of other uh, websites, Udemy, edX, a lot of those people who offer these courses as well. Uh, if you want a structured you know, certificate course, and is offering that. So again, depends completely on where you are in your career, how much you're interested, how long do you think it will take you to learn, how soon do you want to get into blockchain as a career? So it depends on those things. But starters, look at some of these uh, online courses that are available, look at different. What is important according to me is to like get multiple perspectives. You know, each one has a different perspective. You have to understand that perspective. Uh, the same thing will be explained by different people differently. So understand how uh, the concept of consensus is explained understand from your own perspective look at samples that make sense to you so i think uh, more than one source is always better so i probably took you know uh, multiple uh, I, I read multiple articles you've got multiple videos and that's how i have to learn the core concepts really well okay one question nilesh nilesh is there i cannot see him I think this video is off, I think. Okay, so there's one question. Uh, many of us have gone through the basic theory of blockchain and Bitcoin. I'm interested in knowing how we can implement this on other things like voting, images, music. Yeah, so essentially we're talking about uh, use cases now. So what is important is, you know, as much as the hype is there, you also have to understand whether a particular problem can be solved using blockchain. And if yes, you have to understand what are the characteristics that blockchain will bring in that will help with that uh, in solving that problem. Uh, I can again go back to the example of what I, I, I was, I'm trying to do, which is to build a background verification system on the blockchain. Uh, so those are the kind of things. So voting, yes, you know, it's, it's one of the use cases that everybody talks about. Provenance, you know, supply chain, few are the use cases which are very popular. Uh, so you need to look at the problem. So I guess you need, it's important that uh, from, a, from a developer perspective, how this is different from the other technologies is that even a developer has to understand the problem statement well and not just look at uh, writing the code. So I think that that is a very, which is why in my slide, I also mentioned learning orientation, curiosity, the need to understand why we are doing what we're doing. Uh, all those are pretty important and assessing the use case and whether blockchain makes sense is one of the very important uh, aspects. I'd love to cover that specific question uh, about, you know, uh, 
using it for images, music, and all. Now, blockchain is for asset tracking, right? And uh, because it's stored on thousands of computers, the, that storage is very expensive. So, just in, as, as an estimate, one gigabyte of data on Ethereum permissionless public mainnet blockchain it will cost you around twenty million dollars. That's one gigabyte because it is stored on th thousands of computers. So, this is the reason why we don't actually store the big uh, static assets, the blobs on blockchain itself. What you can do is you can just publish them as a computer hash and that just maintain the hash on the blockchain. So that allows you to, that, that, that lets you give, you give your users and recipients a guarantee that I will not be able to fake this asset or you don't have to keep the entire image or music on the blockchain. So you can track proofs and therefore I think that cryptography is really important. I mean hash, hash function has been there for a long time. It's only in the uh, first decade of 21st century that we apply it to version control. Now we, all of us we use, all of us use it, right? The same ideas are there. We, we take a file, we hash it, and then we track the hash. And it doesn't matter where the file comes from. We, it, we'll always get back the same file. So yeah, so what you could do is, okay, for so example, what you could do is publish the image, publish the song, video a big pdf on ipfs which gives you a hash and then you just track that hash on blockchain transactions as a metadata so there is one question uh, about freshers so what is the scope for freshers what will be your advice uh, yeah i think uh, is a good field to get into for uh, freshers. I, I generally look at uh, people who are trainees uh, in my company are people who are freshers. So one, one advantage I find is that you know if you get into working in a particular technology you have things that you have to unlearn. So here it, it's a fresh start. Also the gap is not too much. So like somebody had mentioned you know the, the, the most experienced developers probably five years into the, sp into the space. If you're smart and you're logical and you want to learn I think you, know, you can quickly get started and uh, interest i mean it's completely passion and interest if you really want to get into this there's a lot of things that you can learn quickly uh, i think niranjan spoke about how he may be in a year or year and a half for him and he's already doing a lot of work in this space so i've been in this space for two years we're also doing multiple projects so it's it's uh, for freshers i think it's a question of passion and you know skill and once you have that i think you can get started with it. Nilesh, if you want to add no, I, I agree, actually. Uh, it turns out that uh, uh, the kind of guarantees that the blockchain has actually makes things simpler, right? Because let's take Solidity as a contract writing language. It's actually not very diff uh, difficult and uh, different from JavaScript. And you have the advantage that you, you don't have to bother with what's happening on the network, what's happening on the file system. Entire guarantee is given to you by the network and therefore it's actually quite easy to learn. However, you do need to get your fundamentals. So there is one interesting question. How can non-developers make a career in blockchain consulting? So I've kind of, is it possible? I've answered that on the uh, Q&A. So basically blockchain projects, they are really community projects. A blockchain project is a belief network. People believe in the same thing and therefore that thing gets value. Which means okay. community building, user experience, uh, marketing, all these are have become really important. And you really need a very uh, fast acting, really, uh, you know, effective team in place. So developers alone will probably not succeed because it's also about community building. And if you can see that in projects uh, that you uh, start today, right? People have raised lots of funds while not having, having developers on their team, but they had a really good marketing. Team. Now, there are some of them are obviously uh, vaporware, but you can see the importance of marketing and community building. So yes, I would see designers, uh, user experience, uh, uh, policy people, the legal advisors, the lots of stuff to be done. Okay. Also, uh, people who come with domain expertise in specific areas, who you know where blockchain is. For example, if you're working, I I am talking to a gentleman who's a specialist in sleep, so he he helps people with sleep problems. So he wants to build a network. Uh, build a you know block come up with a blockchain uh, uh, he's not going to launch an ico where he says that he'd like to have 
people with similar problems uh, vote for what kind of research work should be done. So if you have domain expertise, you can push the blockchain to your advantage, you know, you use the protocol and you know, come up with products and solutions where you know your domain expertise makes a big difference. You know, that is important. Okay, I think uh, there might be more questions in the chat, but I think uh, this is like past the budgeted time for this thing. Uh, I think we had a lot of uh, people in discussion around a lot of variety of topics that were interesting and useful. So I would, I would again thank all the people, all the wonderful speakers that we had today who shared their uh, knowledge very, very effectively and very candidly with all of you. Uh, and a lot of excitement building up around this space. So I think we would love to continue this momentum. Uh, this is just the first webcast that we did. We would love to keep on doing these more often. We have these speakers. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm hopeful that they will be you know, in continuous touch with you, all of you, your questions. So we're going to channel all of that knowledge into some kind of functional blocks where there is uh, uh, you know easy information flow without spamming every, anyone so we have a whatsapp group we have a medium publication uh, join follow that and what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, content of today's webcast and put it in some sort of uh, digestible format uh, from each of the uh, of the speakers and put it on medium as a blog i would also request all of the speakers to share any specific list uh, that you want to share with the attendees today so that they can refer to it later. We will be taking your decks and also be uploading those in the Medium blog so that people can download it from there and then ask further questions. So we're gonna also invite you, all the speakers to the WhatsApp group if you are up for it, uh, if you're not into too many WhatsApp group already. So we'll, we'll try to keep you know the spam out and we'll try to make it more uh, intuitive and you know more effective. So with that, uh, we will be in touch guys so we have your email addresses uh, we so watch out for your email we will be sending you emails with follow up questions uh, uh, thanks again to all the uh, speakers uh, satish uh, and amity online they have uh, made available a demo for you guys to try out their uh, new upcoming uh, blockchain certification program so the, uh, there's a google form that you can fill to get that link uh, to get the demo and they also have uh, offered some uh, good scholarships for people who are attending this webcast today. So go ahead and make use of the, uh, the scholarship as well. So with that, uh, again, thank you, everyone. Uh, we had a great time. I hope you found it useful. And keep. Uh, we'll also be floating a survey uh, to get feedback on this. How could we have uh, you know, managed this event better? So please let us know your thoughts. And let's stay in touch. And let's form the community. Uh, that helps each other, uh, which grows together. So thank you again, uh, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, your time and thanks from all the people who made this happen. So Anuj and Isha, who were mostly in touch with the speakers, uh, thanks to them to make this event happen. And all the again, to all the speakers who took out time from the busy schedule to make this happen. Thanks again, guys. Uh, thanks so much and have a good night. Thanks everyone. Wonderful to see the interest in blockchain and uh, special thanks to uh, Nikunj and team for organizing something which has really been awesome. Very happy to be part of this and I think this is just the beginning. We should do a lot more of these to ensure that a lot more questions get answered or the interest is just going up. So, thanks and good night. Thanks and good night everyone. Yeah, thanks. Good night. So you can still interact with the chat if you want. The chat will still be open. <laughs>